hey you guys welcome back to another video this is Shanita if you have never clicked on one of my videos before this is my natural hair channel where I talk all things natural hair um, I do all kinds of product reviews and hauls and we talk processes and procedures and how to's on this channel so if you want to stick around for this video and you are interested in anything that is said here or any other prior videos feel free to subscribe and um, then you can be notified whenever I post a video I am typically posting a video as of right now every single day I did not plan it that way it's just happened to work out this way and so right now we are in the midst of this virus outbreak and so I have a little time on my hand so I've been using it to just come on and communicate with you and so today's video is is kind of tied into that we are going to talk about things to do or I'm gonna be sharing things I do to stay calm in the midst of panic trials how to keep grounded um, I don't even know what I'm gonna entitle this video we'll we'll see at the end but that's the gist of it I just wanted to come on and talk to you all today we come on and we talk about natural hair and uh, beauty tips all the time and so we are all going through our own struggles in life in regard to something so I thought I would come on and just share a few life tips hoping that it will help you or maybe someone you know so if you are interested in hearing my life tips to get through trials then stay tuned okay you guys um i am drinking tea so i hope that won't bother you um that hey that can go down as one of those tips i drink three to four cups of green tea every single day it has now got to be such a habit it's just second nature green tea is so so good for you in so many different um benefits it offer and you can look that up on your own time that wasn't on my list but you can add that <laughs> that's a bonus <laughs> so the first thing i want to talk about it's just how when I wake up in the morning, I get myself grounded for the day by the, I wake up and I thank God for waking me up. And then I put on my headphones and I meditate. Um, meditation has got such a, well, there's a myth. There's so many rumors and so many myths going on about it. A lot of people say Christians shouldn't do it because it is the process of emptying your mind or you're worshiping some other God. There's so, been so many myths surrounding meditation, but um, people use it for what they need it for. And for me, I learned to do it to just stay calm, to focus myself. I had a co-worker that I worked with probably seven years ago now who talked to me all the time about meditating. And I was in the prime of my life. I had small kids. My husband was deployed. Honey, I did. I barely had time to put on clothes, let alone find meditation in um, the course of my day. So, um, but you know, sometimes people plant seeds in your mind and it just kind of always stay there. It took me probably the next four or five years in my life. We moved twice at that point and I was in a total different place. And... Uh, ran up on a news anchor who talked about it and then I went in the library one time I think there was a book there about it and then from there I ended up listening to an audio book about it and so uh, I and I decided at that point to start trying to take it a little bit more seriously after I realized that some of those myths and rumors and weird things that I heard wasn't true so I, I'm going to try not to make this video so long, you guys. For me, I use meditation because it exercises the brain. It settles my monkey brain, I call it. I get up in the morning and you know how when you wake up, your mind is just all over the place. You know, you think about what you got to do. You think about something you said to somebody yesterday you should have said. You think about something you should have said to somebody. Like you're, you 
counting all the hundreds of things you got to do before your feet even hit the ground. So before I even get up, I settle my day with meditation and what it does, it teaches my brain to focus. When I first started doing this, it was torture because I would sit there, well lie there because I actually do it in the bed as I'm lying down before I get up. And um, I would sit there to meditate and just all kinds of crazy things would come into my mind. But meditation is really just a practice thought. It is a practice thought on one thing. So whatever thing you put in your mind, you just focus on that one thing. And for me, that became my breathing. I just focused on my breathing. And so the more you do it, the better you get at it. Start with one minute and the next day two and two, you know, until you build yourself up to where you want it to be. But ultimately what it did was teach my brain to calm down to focus on this one thing at a time and it took me no time at all i mean within days for my for me to be able to see how that was going to be lived out in my life i found when i was concentrating on something instead of being all over the place and trying to remember so many things at one time i was literally able to focus on one thing it was such an eye-opening experience for me and so that is the first thing that I do. Okay, uh, the next thing I do is I pray. I am a Christian and I love Jesus and I have a relationship with him I've had all of my life and so I pray every day, especially right now with so much going on. I have kids, I have a husband, I have family that are, you know, everybody's kind of scattered out and um, my husband and kids and I are the only family we have here in this immediate area and right now we're in the midst of this outbreak and there's so much going on and so I always start my day with just talking to God, just thanking him for blessing us and keeping us and praying that he'll continue to be with us and for just guiding us through all our decisions and keeping us through all our mistakes and forgiving us through all of our mess. Like he's just been so, so good. And um, right now I am in the midst of always getting up, praying protection over my family and myself from this virus. It is affecting so many people in so many ways. And sometimes people think these things are so far off from themselves and they feel like, I don't know, it's just easy to get lost in your own world as if, you know, this is not about you or, you know, it doesn't happen to anybody you know, but this could very well be you or somebody you know. These thousands and thousands of people that are contracting this virus, I mean, for every person that uh, gets it, you know, some family member is scared. They're anxious and um, full of fear for every person that has passed away from it. Like that was somebody's loved one. Somebody loved that person. That's a whole family that has been affected by um, one death. I was actually listening to the news last night and there was this family of 11. There was a mom and dad and they had 11 kids. And from this virus, um, the mom passed and four of the siblings. That's five people wiped away in just this, this instance. So God, it was so heartbreaking. And so, you know, none of us are exempt from that. So I always pray about that. Um, 
And I am very open about my faith. So if you are a person who don't care for that, don't want to hear about this, then I advise you to go ahead and click off this video. It is completely optional. You don't have to listen. But I am asking you to please not go into the comment section and just make negative discouraging remarks because I want this to be a positive space. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the next hair video. <laughs> Uh, but for the rest of you, um, so that is the second thing I do. And also I read my Bible. You know, we all probably have the Bible app on our phone and I take that out. I'm subscribed to several of those Bible plans at a time. And I read that and I really try to focus in on what I'm being taught and what that is saying to me. Um, and uh, the reason that I meditate, my husband said one time, well, why do you meditate before you pray? Isn't praying the most important thing? Praying is the most important thing. It is way more powerful to me than the meditation. But I meditate first because it helps me to uh, slow my mind down and get into the right space where I'm only thinking again about that one thing. That's what meditation is. It stops all the crazy stuff running around and helps you focus on one thing. So once I'm done meditating, my mind is in this calm, peaceful state where I can talk to God with no interruptions, with no, you know, thoughts bouncing all over the place, no list of things I need to do going on. And so I do it for that reason. I start my day like that every single day and I have that luxury and I'm so blessed and so thankful for that. I know that everybody does not but that is what I do every single day. But during these times right now, a lot of you are probably at home or have more time at home than you typically would. And so I just wanted to give you some ideas of other things that I have been engaging in to just give you some ideas of things to do. Um, we are all straddled with our trials and we've all got things, we've all got things going on, whether that's relationship problems with a friend, with a significant significant other, with a spouse, um, with family members. Um, you know, maybe you got a job you don't like. Maybe you're struggling with some financial issues. Maybe you're literally just physically tired and exhausted and overwhelmed. And it just seems like you just can't go another step. And so, we all have those days. And so a lot of us are on the other side of a lot of that. And I am just here to encourage you to let you know you will make it on the other side of this. You are not alone. I spent so much time in my life doing that, thinking that some of the things that was happening in my family or things that I was struggling with, that I was the only one. And so much of it was so embarrassing and I chose not to share it in the moment. You know, a little bit later on after things got better, then I shared a lot of those things, but I, always realized when I had a person that I could talk to about some of those issues and just get it off of my chest and just say out loud what was happening, I always felt better. You know, talking about it doesn't do anything about it. You know, there it doesn't necessarily change the situation, but it just eases your mental health and it just calms your emotions down in a way where you feel like you know, this elephant is off your shoulder and you feel so much better. So some of the things that I wanted to uh, share with you are ideas you may want to try during this time off. You know, I really encourage you to use this time wisely. A lot of people need it this time down and don't even realize it. I hear a lot of people complaining about having too much time on their hands. We all have so much entertainment. I mean, my goodness, there is no, the when somebody tells me they are bored, I just think to myself, I could think of a million things that I could be doing. And so I encourage you all to do some of the same things and take a lot of this time and do some self-reflection and look at your life and think about the things that you spend your time and energy on that may not be worth the time and energy that you're giving it. And just take this time and 
live your life you know take this time to reconnect to kind of reset yourself you know do a factory reset and just kind of get back to a place where you feel comfortable and where you feel happy and um if you're having a relationship problem you know take this time to resolve it um, reconnect with an old friend or old family member. This is a great time to take up a new hobby. If there's something that you've always wanted to do and always put it off, this is a great time to do that. If you've never thought about taking up a hobby, it is very important that everybody have at least one thing that you love to do that is just your own. One where you're not dependent on anybody else to do it with you. One that you know, doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, we are all at a point where there are some things in our life we need, and then there's some things we want. And just for the sake of the balance and your emotional and mental health, you need a hobby. You need something that you can do that you feel fulfilled doing, that you can entertain yourself, where you're content. You just need a place of contentment. And so getting a hobby is a great way to do that. So getting a, starting a new hobby, um, if you have never journaled before and you're going through a lot of negative things in your life at this point, know that this is just a season. It seems like it's going to be forever. I promise you it's not going to last forever. And I can say that because when I was there, people said to me the same thing. And I am on the other side of a lot of things realizing that they were right. This is not going to last forever, but take your time and, um, Take out a notebook and a pen and journal. Write down what is going on in your head, what's going on in your heart. You will feel so much better. And a lot of people laugh at that and think, how on earth does that help? Well, to me, it's just like talking, right? You can share the most intimate details of what you're feeling and thinking without worrying about if you're going to be judged or how somebody is going to see you or what they're going to think about you. And just pour your heart out as raw as you can get. And you will get that same relief as if you have told somebody and it just lifts the weight it does I promise you it does I can't tell you what happens in the uh, brain that says relief just because you wrote something down but I encourage you to just give it a shot maybe this will be the one thing you try during this time down and not typing don't do it on the computer you need to put pen to paper there is something about writing down what is going on that makes it just um I don't know it's like you're dealing with it in some way it's like you're getting it out of yourself and writing it down just it just takes it from here and it goes all down in your body and through your arms. And once you write it down, you just feel better. It's like you've lost a lot of that negative energy. Another thing that you can do that all of us can do in some form or another is to exercise. You know that one was going to come up. I encourage you to take this time and maybe get back into an exercise routine. I bet at some point all of you either started one and fell off or you're not doing as much as you used to and you want to get back started. This is a great time to do that. Um, if you don't have any equipment in your home, you can always go outside and take a walk. There are a million videos on YouTube free that you can turn on and do some um, exercises too. They Some teach you about how to use equipment in your home. You know, certain things you can make into equipment like uh, Canned goods can be a weight or um, you can use a towel instead of a band for yoga or just something to the effect. And maybe you won't need anything at all. There are routines and things that you can do that require no equipment whatsoever. You just using your um, body to move and that is so important. It's a great time to get started back with that. It's not the same as being out walking and doing a whole lot of moving around, but a little bit is always better than nothing. 
And so if you can't or just despise exercise and you hate it so much, though it is so good for you, um, that is another thing that just increase the endorphins in your brain that goes through your body that make you feel so good. So, so good. You can exercise going into, you can go into an exercise routine with so much heaviness in your heart and so much on your mind, but it's like as you're working out, sometimes I feel like I'm sweating out all of that gunk, you know, it is just purging through my skin all those problems is just being released and I'm getting that endorphin feeling and I feel so amazing and so I have never ever regretted um exercising even if I went into it having to drag a pool and force myself you always feel better afterwards than before and if you don't like exercising then the least it you can do that is also beneficial for you is to just stretch you know do some yoga same thing turn on uh, YouTube and just do some stretches for your body. There are some things your body does every single day that require certain muscles to move. And if they get tight because they are not being used or if those muscles get weak, you're going to find yourself, you know, moaning and groaning as you get up, as you sit down, as you lay down, as you get up, just doing everyday things, reaching up in a cabinet or something up high because you're losing strength in your muscles and joints. And so if nothing else, giving your body a good stretch and stretching out those limbs and those muscles and tissues, make them work better. They become more flexible and stronger, and then you can move around better. And then you will love that feeling. You will continue to do that. And then you will age so much more gracefully. You won't regret that. So that is something else that you can try. Um, one of the other things is, um, how about the days of actually reading, reading a book, reading something on your shelves that you have bought and kept putting off and didn't, or if you started and didn't get anywhere and eventually just put it back up, how about pulling that book down and do some reading? Again, so good for your brain to exercise, so good to continue to keep reading and feeding new vocabulary words into your mind. Um, Sometimes just to escape, you can read a fiction book and just be on the walls inside somebody else's life watching and you can escape yours for a little while. Your brain needs that break to just get away from yourself for a little bit. Even if you only just have magazines laying around. I remember at the end of the year last year, the year just passed me by. I was getting magazines in the mail and as fast as I could get them, I would just put them over in the magazine rack. And by the end of the year, I had so many magazines that I had not read. Um, and a lot of those magazines, can make you feel bad because they've got these skinny people on whose makeup is flawless and their clothes are so fashionable and they look so wonderful. I look past all of that and I go straight into the substance. There's usually at least an article or two in there of something you can learn from, regardless of what magazine it is. Whether it is um, a fashion magazine, whether it's just one for, you know, business purposes. Essence always have tons of great ones. Oprah's magazine has tons of good ones. They're always giving some, there's some information in there that you can learn something from. Something. And if you don't want to get that involved with um, having to read, I tell my husband sometimes, I just don't want to think. I want to do something, entertain myself with that just does not require any thinking whatsoever, then you can find a um, nice movie to watch. You can find something entertaining that will make you laugh. You can listen to music. Listening to music is another thing that increase endorphins that just clears your mind for a little bit. If music comes on and you know the words, you know, it's something about putting it on and hearing it and then you want to sing and you want to dance and you just feel better. So doing that, um, listening to music while exercising, oh my gosh, that is over the that's next level like to combine those two is phenomenal not only does it make you um move faster you're 
moving more rhythmically and so you're working out typically to the beat of the song so sometimes you would have gotten so into a song and you have done way more say push-ups than you thought or you've walked way further than you thought simply because you've just gotten into the music and completely forgot about that you were exercising so those are ways to increase your gains and maybe start with three push-ups and then add one or two every day and see how many you have done by the end of this time frame when you're able to get back out and back into the world. You know, just use this time to challenge yourself in some way. Sometimes people see challenges and um, things you do to discipline yourself as some sort of punishment and it's not. Every time you add something good, it is a victory. Every time you lose something that you're not supposed to have or that is bad for you is a victory. So let's not look so long term that it's like, well, you know, I want to do 30 push-ups, but I know I never will. Well, start with doing five and then feel good about that five and then make 10 your um, next goal and then do the 10. You'll be so, so surprised how fulfilling it is to just see yourself increasing in an area of your life that is positive for you. You will be better off. Your family will be better off because you will be in such a much better hit space that you can handle things that come up in their lives. You know, we as women are pulled in so many different directions. We are taking care of things for the people in our home and keeping up with appointments. And now we gotta do laundry, you gotta get grocery, you gotta cook, you gotta have all these things ready for these people that we don't take time for the people. That is going to be a big, big suggestion for me during this time. That stuff will always be there. Of course, you've got to eat. But even if you have to schedule time, sometimes we say you want to spend more time with the kids. And then before you know it, you've done so much of errands and things that you needed to do that the time is gone. Or maybe you've lost time because you've been on social media for hours at a time. Challenge yourself to carve out time, even if you have to manually put it on a calendar or a uh, set an alarm clock that between two and four or between six and eight, I'm going to do nothing but spend time with my family. No phone time, no games, no Kindles, no video games, nothing but sit and do something together. You know, playing a game, um, playing cards or watching a movie or just sitting, cuddling up together. Something that you can look back on after this time and say, you know, I got a chance to actually sit down and enjoy my family. You will never, ever regret that. But once you go back to work and once you go back out to life and you look at this time and think, I spent all of my time cleaning. I spent all of my time rearranging a closet or cleaning out my garage or doing some of those chores that are just always going to be there. You're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel guilty. So schedule in some time to spend with your family. And if you're single, then with your friends. If you don't live, if you don't live near your family, then, you know, maybe it's a neighbor you want to spend time with. Maybe it's friends you want to spend time with. Um, so those are also options. But more than anything else, just learn to love yourself and know that you are loved. It may not feel like it, and it may seem like the thing you're going through is going to last forever and that you're never going to be able to come out of it. And this will pass. This will pass. I heard a saying that says, your life will go where your mind will go. So if you spend a lot of time on the negativity and on the negative things that could go wrong, might go wrong, did go wrong, then your life is just going to be pulled in that direction of having things to go wrong. And because now that is in your head, it is all you will ever see is those things that are going wrong. But instead, if you will take that time and just use it to be more positive and have a faith that things are going to turn around. And if it doesn't happen today, then uh, believe that it will happen tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, then believe that it's going to happen the next day. If it doesn't happen the next day, then at some point you got to start telling yourself, well, you know what? I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but 
I know it is gonna happen and every day that goes by I know I am one step closer to what it is that I need so know that God loves you I don't care what state your life is in or what you are going through or um, how lonely you feel you are seen you are heard and there is a purpose for you that is so much bigger than you can imagine. I just ask that you would have some faith to believe that and pray for God to show you what that is. And just live your life in a way that is positive. Uh, remove some negativity from your life, whether that's people, whether that's something you're personally doing. Take this time to just better yourself. And each of us have areas that we can do that with. So I challenge you to take this time in the next few minutes after this video and to just let your mind wander and reminisce. You know, what dream am I holding in my heart that I wanna do? What thing was it that I said I wanted to do and never started? Or the thing I started and never finished? Or even if it's a project around the house, if there is some I don't know, clean out your kid's closet or something. Just make use of the time and try to keep your thoughts pure. Try to keep them clean. Listen to music. Smile and laugh as much as you possibly can. And that energy that you give out will come back to you tenfold. So... This unplanned video was once again all over the place, you guys. And so I hope that I said something to just set off a light bulb for you that might help you find your way. It's not going to help you find your way through life, but find your way through the day. And then we'll start taking it one day at a time. And I think that we all put so much emphasis on our hair and on our looks. And sometimes I feel guilty about that because it feels so superficial. It seems like sometimes I'm thinking to myself, do I put too much emphasis on this? You know, does it matter that much when really what matters is right inside of here? who you are as a person and what you're going to contribute to this world, the legacy you're going to leave for your loved ones. That's what truly matters. None of us are here to stay. And so what we look like is irrelevant. Maya Angelou said, or oh, was it Toni Morrison? I'll find out and I'll put it up here. One of them said, people may not remember what you said to them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. I find that to be true. It's true in my own life, you know? I know exactly how people have made me felt and I know that you have that experience as well. So let's take this time to do something big do something different do something new or resume something but more than anything else try to get in touch with your spiritual side we are all all spiritual beings and we our souls all long for something and that something i believe is god and until that is resumed you'll never feel contentment. You'll always feel like you're not good enough. You'll always feel like you're not, um, like your life is lagging behind or that something is missing. And he is that thing. He is that thing. He wants a relationship with you and he wants to help you guide your life and to, um, help things be easier for you and he is just waiting for the invitation and waiting for you to ask so now that i said this short video was going to be short and it's super duper long i just want you to maybe drop down below and let me know if you have had any of these thoughts over this time and if you have anything new that you would like to start or are thinking about starting or something you want to resume or any comments that you want to make about this video, I would welcome, love, love, love to chat with you about it. So um, don't be shy. Drop down below and let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you want more of these sort of chit chat encouraging um, videos. I, I always tell my mom I can dish it out. If somebody needs some encouraging words, I am one to do it. I love doing it. And then when it comes to me... Uh, 
using my own words is like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's harder to do than it is to uh, give it out to somebody else. But if I can help one person do that and find a um, just a higher place in your life where you have um, let some bad things go and you're trying to work your life up to the next level to find out what God's amazing purpose is for you, then I will be thrilled. So don't forget to subscribe to this video. And again, let me know if you are interested in any more of these little chit chats. And I will talk to you later, guys. So until next time, bye-bye.